This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. I'm joined over Zoom. I know I haven't got the normal setup here, and my voice is a little bit croaky because I'm still in Nashville and I'm very, very tired. I'm joined by Wei Plem over Zoom. Wei, it's good to see you again. It's been a while since we've done one of these Zoom interviews. How you been? Why are you tired, bro? Been training, Wei. Been training. Yeah. Fight week and fight week as well. It was quite long. I was going to say, it's like 1 p.m. right now over there, or 12. It's like noon. Yeah. Well, I was up quite Training, though, yeah? Sorry? Because you've been training, though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. Dude. So, um, BJ Flores came by the house, and we did some bag work and some pads. So I found it, found it more found it more interesting than usual to be fair, but obviously training after that. You feel good? Yeah. Well, yeah. My voice is really, really, it sounds really, really croaky, and uh, all my body aches. But yeah, everything's good at my side. How are you, though? The entire body aches. You haven't trained in a while, huh? That's why. <laughs> yeah. I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I just woke up. Um, I have been obviously doing my thing. You know what I mean? I've been making videos, um, getting stuff ready for, you know, big cards and just try to uh, try to see where, where the weight concept's going to go, man. Try to see where the channel is going to grow and, and go to the next phase. No, it's good. It's good on your side. Things seem to be kind of on the up, as it were. I'm um, we'll just go straight into it then. Miss it's 13 in Nashville. I was kind of hoping that you would be there since you're the last one in Nashville, unfortunately. I know, I know. Do you regret yeah. it now of all the chaos? No, no, I don't. You know, my mom texted me. She was like, thank God you didn't go down there. And I was like, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you had some stuff that you couldn't prevent um, with the, the bomb threat. I've never seen anything like that. I've seen that happen. Uh, but I've never seen it happen live like that. That was crazy. Um, luckily, obviously, nothing was actually nothing happened. But yeah, I am. I can. I can definitely say I'm glad I wasn't there. Well, I see the bomb threat is like uh, that wasn't the end and be all because that kind of helped. I think mean, Simon said it, it kind of helped build misfits up even more, get it trending even crazier. But then the issue was with the main event where most people didn't fight. I guess that kind of put the dampener on at the very end. Mm -hmm. Whether it just been the bomb threat, it would still be kind of regarded as quite a good show. But we most wanted putting out last minute. It didn't. Uh, it didn't help the scenario. No, it didn't. I mean, to be honest, dude, I, I've said this so many times. I just didn't think the main event was a good idea. The way it was came up, like just the idea itself. I just thought it was a bad idea to put people that weren't experienced enough, in my opinion, to be in a main event in a main event and trust them with it. You can say. Oh, well, it was because of the bomb threat or because they had to wait so long or, or whatever. But regardless, you had just some people. I'm not I'm not even talking about Fox. I think Fox, you know, him being there is fine. Although I think, you know, if it was me, it's just not. But I would have done the uh, lightweight tournament in the co-main and main. You know, build that up because that is the story you're already writing, right? You want to build them up on smaller cards so that they have a name for the bigger cards. That just makes sense to me. But... Yeah, I just don't think you trust people that aren't anywhere near main event level with no reason to be in a main event. No one's there to watch them. You know what I'm saying? Don't put them in the main event, and you don't have to worry about stuff like this. But uh, like I said, you live and you learn. Um, it was definitely not Misfit's best moment for a variety of reasons, but one of them for sure being the bomb threat, which is insane. No one can really, no one can really plan for that. But the other stuff you definitely could have planned for. I saw your video on it. I think I saw a clip that got reposted on Twitter. But yeah. you were saying there's kind of Mrs. Fault for the main event. Is it Mrs. Fault that most wanted pulled out? Do you really think? No, no. It's not their fault he pulled out. It's their fault, in my opinion, they made the the main event the way they made it. Your own when you put certain people in a position, that's a reflection on you. Right? So that's misfit saying you are main event worthy. Now you can't, I mean, you can't really blame anybody for the kid pulling out. He got nervous, but at the same time, you can put the finger on Misfit and say, this was the guy you thought was ready. He was, of course, not ready. And there was no reason to put him in this spot. And I'm not saying that's their fault for me. Like, oh, look at you taking. It. It's just, you have to be smarter than this. And to put somebody in their second fight for no reason other than to do, to do the gimmick match, which I think shouldn't be in the main event anyway in that spot. I think it would have been better just as a one-on-one -on -one match. If you wanted to highlight Fox, you could have done that with anybody. You know what I mean? 
But it kind of baffles me, though, about the most wanted situation, because he thought Joey Knight, who's a far more dangerous fighter than Fox, Fox will get there Joey Knight's level, but give it a few years. Mm. But Joey Knight's going to be up here. He yeah. fought him with a lot more fans and in his debut. So, and I don't know what happened with him, man. Than the road leads. And I have no idea what happened. With him. Maybe his corner as well. His two v one. I kind of baffled me. Maybe, yeah, it's it, it's odd. I mean, you can never know why someone just flat out has a panic attack or something. I I can't ever try to speculate on it. I mean, maybe it was the fact that he was the main event and he thought this time around he needed there was some expectation on him. You know, like in the Joey fight, no one really thought he would win, so it was like whatever. I didn't think they were going to win this, but maybe he did. I don't know. You know, maybe he was like, oh, you know, I really got to step it up this time. I don't know. I don't know what, what, why people do what they do. So I'm not going to even try to like dissect that. I heard he had to shit in the woods, which was fucking crazy. Uh, like he literally, that's what he said on your interview, right? He like had to, go, he went and took a poop in the woods. It's iconic. That's an iconic line right there. Th that really happened though. Oh, I'm guessing right? I'm saying it. I mean, we all went outside for about an hour and a half. So, where was how did he wipe? There's, I mean, if he shit in the woods, it means there's oh, no wait, toilet. That's a good question. I should have asked that when I was interviewing him. It's just quite, it was quite a sad interview. So I wasn't, yeah, you didn't want to play around. I feel you. Yeah. That, was, that would be yeah. such a good question to say. How did you, you, you gotta up? think, how do you wipe when there's no toilet paper and there's no toilet? I don't know. All right, again, I'll yeah, next. I'm guessing, I'm yeah, bro. Soon. I'll ask him that question. Yeah, um, I saw that it lo it's looking like from what I've seen on Twitter. Little box and get on misfits. Do you think they should allow box and get on misfits? Where'd you where'd you rank it? What are your thoughts? Who we say it again? Who's getting on misfits? Most wanted fighter again on misfits. Um, I mean, listen, it's not a most wanted problem. For me, I look at the the risk reward of putting certain people on cards. And I said this, I think I tweeted it after the the, the main event. I think misfits, and I think they're gonna do this, they need to look at who and why they're putting people on cards. What do you bring to the promotion? Mams is a very nice guy. He values a lot of loyalty and relationships and things like that. But at a certain point, this has to be business. Do you help the business of misfits? And I don't mean, do you help the small creator scene? Do you help like, ooh, because we put one of the, and again, they're not really creators, but the smaller community scene because we put one of them on there, they're going to be more loyal. I, I think that's the wrong way to look at it. If you see potential in someone, yeah, put them on the card, sure. But if they have no reason, there's no following, if there's no interest, it's really you shouldn't have them on the card. So for most, I think it's more so go off on some other thing. And if you want to box, box. But people are missing the point of influencer boxing. People are like, oh, go go build your name on on another small card. Okay, go do that. But we don't watch you because you're a good boxer. Or at least that's not the point, right? We obviously want to see you fight, but you should have – go build your following. Go do something interesting to gain an audience. Go build a channel. Go do something, right? Like it's not go get better at fighting. Okay, cool. You're a good fighter. Go build your audience, you know? We saw how big the you know, the hype and all the viral clips from Natalia and Modine, who arguably, well, I may say both of them so I can say this, but they're not at the highest level of boxing skill-wise. But in terms of promotion, they are doing a pretty damn good job. I mean, it, all the clips on Twitter are going viral, doing millions and millions. Natalia did a good job. Those are yeah, the Natalia highest did videos good. on my channel of the entire week. All the kind of Natalia Modine build-up. I mean, yeah. I agree with you when you say, go focus on your content rather than your boxing. Because yeah. you get guys who get knocked out, but are still well-known, and they'll find the next card because they provided all the views and attention and attraction. Or you get guys very skilled, but who doesn't have the have their attraction, have the content, have the fan base, who won't fight again for a while. So I can see where we're coming from at that point. Yeah, like, obviously you want to work on your craft. That's fine. Do that. And I do actually have a problem with the Modine fight. Modine didn't even show up to fight. Like, I get it. You know, promote, do that. That's great. And Vitaly did that. Fair play to him. When you get in there, at least take it seriously. At least try, you know, just try. You don't have to be the best boxer in the world, but you do have to give effort. Modine didn't even give any effort. Like, didn't even do. I don't even know what Modine does, by the way. I don't even know what does he do. He's a TikTok troll. <sighs> yeah, uh, <laughs> Vitaly. I thought Vitaly did well. I then the whole thing with Vitaly and the drug test too. That was weird, but yeah, 
it's essentially you gotta you have to be able to be an interesting character outside of boxing. And yes, you have to take the sport seriously enough to train it, but no one's out here, at least on a large scale, worried about if you're a gold gloves boxer or not. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I can see. I can see where you're coming from. Um, who do you think swatted their event? A lot of people are kind of blaming Aiden Ross's kind of community for doing I would, it. I mean streamers community. It's hard for accusations around, but uh I mean, probably, probably if you're, if you're looking at, you know, a community that's known for that kind of stuff, I've heard about Aiden's community doing that. Like one thing you can't do is go, Aiden did it. That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? That's not fair to, to do to the kid. Like Aiden specifically, I don't think did that. And I don't think he deserves a lot of the blame for it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Aiden was like, oh yeah, let's, let's get him swatted. Same thing. I heard Neon's community. Like, I don't think Neon while being there was like, oh yeah, let's get it swatted. Like, you can you're you're responsible for your community to a certain degree, but you're also not their fathers. And for those two guys, they have a community that's massive. You can't ha you you can't control everyone, right? So, of course, whoever did it's a piece of shit, and slap the cuffs on them and throw them under the jail for it. Because that that stuff, like people don't realize, swatting can get people killed. Um, has gotten people killed. Um just affects people's lives completely. I've, I've seen people get restraining orders that take years and years and years to come uh, overcome because of that kind of stuff. So that's bullshit. But if I had to guess, it was probably some, one of these kids out of these communities that thought they would get a lot of attention for doing it and wanted to look cool to their online community friends. That's so crazy to me that in America, some 14 year old kid can hold that much power to shut down a whole event and get yep. police kind of in, what, in with machine guns running to an event, getting everyone else out. But a 14 year old, 15 year old kid can literally just do that by one phone call. That's insane to me. Welcome to the States, Fred. <laughs> Welcome to the States. It, it doesn't usually happen on a large scale because I heard Mams say this too for events that are, you know, bigger, let's just say, or more experienced uh, NFL games, NBA finals, whatever. Those kind of things happen, and people are like, yeah, okay. And they have people sweeping the event while it's happening type thing, you know? I think it was just because you guys were – I think you guys were in the municipal center. I don't remember where y'all were, but – Say again, I recognize it. Was it the mun municipal center they were at? No, it was the worldwide stages. Is that not – that might have been a different spot than the last – It was a different spot from the last – Okay. Natural event, yeah. Different. Okay, okay. But even though, even still, they're probably not used to holding the zone level, you know, events and this camera crews and stuff like that. So for them, it was just like, yeah, let's just make sure. You're probably right, but there's nothing here, but let's just make sure, you know. So it's unfortunate, but yeah, man, America's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, America is crazy. I like it, though. I like it. Um, you moving out here, Fred? You like America more? Just say it, bro. It's fine. I know, I can't betray my UK roots. Um, I saw you doing your live reaction. When you were doing yeah. your live stream on your channel, and when mm -hmm. it got spotted, what, did it rise up in viewers, live viewers, in, the, in a significant amount? Yeah, yeah, people were... were so what was it, like 2,000 viewers? I think I checked it, there was like 4K. When I was on yeah, we popped, we popped like so at least 2K. Before, what were you after, like 2K to 4K, was that it? Yeah. Yeah, because people, any anytime something happens like that, people want... It, you know, it turns into drama. It turns into controversy, you know, like a, a real life situation. If you're covering it, they're like, Oh, what happened? Um, yeah. But people were, were wanting to know I was clicking in on people's streams because people were live streaming at the event. I was clicking in on Slim's deal and, and seeing kind of what was going on. But yeah, people were, were definitely tuning in to see why or what happened. Mm, that's true. Everyone is, it was, it wasn't funny, but everyone, all the creators are outside. So everyone's kind of smelling around. So I walked around, Grabbing people for interviews, and then you do the live streamers like Neon. You were you were hustling, buddy. You were yeah. out there with the interviews, all running around with their cameras. So it was like it was almost like a, right, just get everyone. Everyone's in like one area for an hour and a half. <laughs> Let's just get as many people as possible while they're outside. You like the flash out there. You were just like running around. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did feel sorry for um, Yuri Gang. I took Yuri Gang after Yuri Gang. Oh, he was sitting there with his gloves on. I saw him on one of the live streams. He was sitting there. The parking lot. I was like, dang. Well, even though that's why I thought he should have been in the main event. But... It's an it's a not knowing feeling, which probably killed him the most. Yeah, for sure. Because you guys are there. You like 
when I'm sitting at a computer, I can go, okay, yeah, um, cool. Like that's not real for sure. It's not real. But you guys may not know that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are there, so it's like y'all don't really have any outside communication or you know what's going on or who's done it type deal. You know, so that's that's got to be scary for sure. I guess it, it's the support of the fighter side being unknown and not knowing what sure is going to happen, which must be quite quite difficult for them. Um, Taylor Holder and Bryce Hall got it at a ringside. What would you make of that fight? We're hoping that can be made of misfits quite soon. I like the fight. I think they should make the fight. Do you think there's going to be a problem with the whole where it happens deal? No, because I've heard recently, between you and me and everyone watching the video, I heard recently... <laughs> <the> <laughs> I don't want to me, me, it's everybody that watches this. I've heard recently that they it will most likely be on Misfits and not Bare Knuckle. Allegedly. Allegedly. That's good. I, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, like, one, I don't know that Taylor would want to sign on to Bare Knuckle. That's, that's, a, that's a brutal sport, man. And two, I mean, it is influencer boxing at its heart, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? That 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 makes sense to do it with the gloves on, main event in a ring. But yeah, I, I love the fight. I think it's exactly. If you want to talk about the roots of influencer boxing, that's exactly what it is, man. Two stars, former friends, we're, now we're, foes. We're beef, like, we're, like beef that's been lasted for the last saying. three, four years. Yeah, yeah. Former friends, now foes, can talk all that shit. It's gonna be good, man. I, I think that's that's one of the best fights you can make right now. So, hopefully, you know. On one of these, I don't know, pay per view card, wherever they got to get it done. Could that headline a pay per view with the right undercard, who are like a fire undercard? Potentially, yeah. Potentially, um, I think you need to give it some build. I don't think you do it in May or something. I think <clears throat> give it a couple of months, get them some some proper social glove style press conferences. You know what I'm saying? Like do something a little bit different than you normally have for them. And then, yeah, I think it could. Is it bigger than Gibb versus Slim if that fight were to happen? That's tough. I would say I don't know because influencer boxing is predominantly a UK fan base. Mm -hmm. So you would have to think that if you did Gibb versus Slim in the UK, they may sell something more for, as far as the gate. I think if you give a slim as the main event, Taylor Holler Bryce Hall as the co-main, and a couple of other really, really good fights, that could be a pay per view card, I reckon. For sure, for sure. It, 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 that's there's no question about that. The only question is, is Gib going to fight? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for the amount of for the amount of money that I know he'll want to make and how much that Miss Fitz will want to pay, I don't know. Do you think Gibbs overpricing himself? I don't like the, the term overpricing unless there's unless you've just never fought and you're just not willing to to like you you keep saying you want to fight and then you're just not willing to move on it. Like Gibb has fought, he's made shit tons of money. That's another thing. The problem with Gibb you, when you want to say he's overpriced, well, he's made that money. Yeah, it's like he may to to me and you and to you know whoever he may not be worth that number, but he's already made it. So it's like. To him, it's like, all right, well, you may think that, but I know how to get it, right? So it's like, okay, well, I can't really say much to you then. So that's probably where Mims is too, you know, where we're, I think a couple of years ago now, they were talking about, you know, th whatever the number was and it was too low for Gib. Mams had to be like, all right, well, okay, go get the number you think you're worth. And he did. Uh, even though Kingpin's not around anymore, he did. So it's like, for him, it has to be worth it. And whatever that price is, to him, it's not overpriced. To the rest of us, it may be. But to him, it's not. Yeah, but that's a fair point saying he actually did get that number. Even that promotion went bankrupt. But um... He got his. I didn't get mine, but he got his. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. fair play. <laughs> I'll never... I, I, the fighter pay thing is not necessarily the same in influencer boxing, but I'll never, like, shit on guys for... If they want a certain number and they go get it, then, hey, fair, fair play, you did it. Credit to them indeed. Um, before we wrap this up, I'll run you past a few more points. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, are you going to be watching the card? Do you reckon you'll be there? I don't know, actually. Um, I haven't heard anything about it. I'm not going to um, I'm not gonna hold my breath just because I know 
you know, the way I talk about things I've learned in my time that it's probably not a good idea for me to state my true opinion and then hope to be on stuff, you know? So, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath, but if I'm there, I, I would, I'd be grateful for the opportunity and I'll say exactly what I say on my channel, but, um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a massive fight. I'll tell you that. You can Maybe. be like, I mean, a host of Floyd Mabber fight. I know. I did. I'd, I'd check off both of those. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy, dude, if I got both. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But they, dude, I know that people don't like hearing that stuff, but doing it in Jerry World, 80,000. Hey, what is Jerry World? That's the arena. It's Jerry World is where the Cowboys play. It's Arlington, Texas, uh, AT&T Stadium. Jerry oh, World is because the WWE WrestleMania had, I think, WrestleMania. Call it Jerry World because. Uh, Jerry Jones, because Jerry Jones is the owner of the Cowboys, so we call it Jerry World. And it's an outside arena, isn't it? Uh, it it can be converted, so you can oh, close okay. the the dome on it, or you can open it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that could be pretty. Do you think it sells eighty thousand tickets? I think they could. Depending on here's the problem for boxing, you can't really. I don't think you can really set it up the same way. Like Canelo and and Billy Joe Saunders did it for I think sixty or sixty five. And they sold that. And then for about 60. Oh, I know. I'm going to say it again. They did it for the C O V I D because I don't want to get anything happen to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> they did it in that era. And yeah. uh, that's about 65,000 there. But I think there's still a limited capacity because of the C word. Yeah. So I, I don't know. If they if they can set it up with like, because when you set events up for boxing, it's a little different. Usually, actually, when you set up in a football field for boxing, you could probably fit more people because you're using the field. But, um, yeah, I think they can do, do 80. I think with the right – I mean, they're already doing it, I think, right. Um, marketing this is like Mike having a chance, which I don't think he does. But people that haven't watched boxing in 30 years will think that. You know what I'm saying? Well, BJ Flores seems to think Mike Tyson is quite a big chance. When I, I, when I, so. him. I know he's kind of former Jake Paul team, but he just seemed to uh... – Kind of be like, I'm confident in Jake, but Mike is still very, very dangerous. Um, I think Mike's dangerous for like a round, you know, maybe, maybe a round and a half. And even his danger, I think, I don't think that the pop is in Mike's hands like it was even four years ago. And Jake's got a fucking melon for a head, right? He's got a skull, dude. He's Jake's head is fucking huge. So I'm not saying walk in there, freaking chin down and take shots on the top of the head like that, but. I think you can zap Mike's power pretty quickly. Uh, and then it's GG. Will Jake try and knock him out or be more exhibition? Yes, 100%. 5,000% Jake's going to try to hurt him. 100%, dude. There's no – like, here's my thing. If you do this fight, you've committed to do this fight, there's nothing else that you can do. You can't go play patty cakes with Mike on Netflix in front of 80,000. Can't do that. I don't make you to me that makes it even worse. But at least if you go in there and let's say Jake does knock Mike Tyson dead. Okay, not dead, not literally dead, but knocks him out. You've become the most hated man in boxing. Yeah. Which is kind like, of a good thing. Like, the level of hated is like not exaggerated enough. Like not hated, hated, hated. Yeah. Kind of, it's insane. I think you roll with it though. I think if you're Jake Paul. Who's who's been more used to being hated in this kind of space? Well, Jake Paul will like lap it up. He'll be loving it. But uh, does um because it's on Netflix, how many concurrent viewers? I don't believe you actually have to buy. It's not like the Zone where you get to Zone and then have to pay right. for anything. Netflix. Right. It's already there. You don't have to pay anything extra. How many right. concurrent? So how many people watching live at the same time? Concurrent oh. viewers that do. So I, to say. I think. What do you think? Well, it's hard. Is the only reason it's hard to say is that you nothing could, to compare it to before. So I, I reckon when the fight's going on, a handful of Netflix, it's got to be like 200 million at least. 260. 260 million. I reckon it would do, How many subscribers are on uh, it? Would, it could do 10 million live concurrence if, it, if it's promoted correctly. Have a press conference before, have a press conference on fight week, and then. I think it could do more than that. And here's why. If, and I don't know that they can do this, but if you could get. So you know how Netflix works. There's like a front page mm -hmm. and then you got to like, there's like the little search bar down below it. 
But let's say when you open Netflix, instead of it being your favorite show, that first thing that pops up on the screen is the Jake and Mike fight. I'm sure. I'm sure that'll be the case. I reckon on the whole. If they get front page, it'll be the case. A massive little post on the Netflix. That's what I'm thinking. If they get the front page, I think you could probably double, maybe even you could get it to fifty potentially. Fifty million currents would be insane. I don't know if it does that. I mean, I hope it does. That'd be great. I don't think. I, I don't think that it would be out of the realm of possibility. But that that's on. I think that's on the optimistic end. But still, dude. 10 million, let's say, if, if, even if it's 10 million. Bananas. You know what I'm saying? That, That's that crazy. Would the, that, that would break the record for any boxing match sports live. Oh, this Netflix thing is going to change live sports, dude. It's going to completely change live sports. So do you reckon Netflix wonder, do stuff about combat sport, like do American football or football in the UK? They'll do that sort of thing, yeah? Just a matter of time, dude. Because right now, contracts with – ESPN here in the States and Fox sports and stuff like that have those sports on, on live television, uh, on cable or, or, you know, in ESPN plus streaming service. But at a certain point, these things are, these contracts are going to end and people are already seeing Amazon prime get into sports. Um, and Netflix is the most user friendly across the world. So let's say you do want to put soccer on there, right? Like that's number one sport in the world. 260 million people. Imagine the World Cup on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> they so easy. The BBC couldn't have it or ITV couldn't have it like in the UK. That would be insane. It'd be so easy for everybody to see it on one specific platform. It's coming, dude. It may not be like next year or five years, but 10 years down the line, these streaming services are going to be, and Netflix being the, the top dog, they're going to be fighting at the tooth and nail for that. Hmm. It's interesting. It definitely changed kind of the, the the board of the whole streaming services. Um, just a couple more things before we wrap this up. Anything coming up for you, Wade, in the next few weeks? Anything um, different? Um, I've been trying to buy a truck, so we'll see if that happens. What truck? Um, it's it's a Ford F one fifty. It's like a ninety nineteen nineties box stop style. Been trying to find one for about a year now, and I found a couple. So we're trying to to either one of them's in Tennessee in Chattanooga. Um, I don't know if you know where Chattanooga is, but you're pretty close to it. You're about an hour and a half away. Um, but the problem is driving it back to California. That's about a two day drive, and it's already an old truck. So I don't know if we want to do that, especially I'm going to spend some money on it. But uh, and then the other one's out here in in California. It's in uh, San Francisco. So we're I'm seeing if it makes sense for me because they're pretty expensive these collector cars, but. Uh, outside of that, I am obviously I've, I've got some dates with most viable prospects coming up. Uh, I'm doing, I think I'm doing all their shows this year. So that's cool. Um, I'm still trying to work my way into this pro wrestling commentary stuff, but it's, it is tough. And right now pro wrestling hotter than it's been in a long time. But, um, outside of that, dude, just. I'm streaming more now, so we're doing live stream. I'm on a stream today. Um, you confused me with streaming because you do YouTube, Kick, Twitch. You, when you get, I know I'm all over the fucking place, bro. I need to just, do, I need to just stream on all platforms. I saw DJ. I say you're, do that. I say you're a hardcore Wade Fem fan. You'd have to take time in a day to check the Twitch, the Kick. <laughs> I'm no longer on Kick anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm on Twitch for just like regular streaming stuff. But I, you know what I should do is I should just stream on Twitch and YouTube, and then just have them both there. That would just make sense, but. Uh, like I said, I saw DJ Academics. He does that. He does it on YouTube, Twitch, and Rumble all at once. He's a monster. But yeah, I'm, I'm streaming a little bit more now. Um, I am trying to get this this place I'm living in paid off really, really quickly, if, if I can. Uh, over the next, I have like a three year plan to pay this thing off and then move back to Tennessee. So we'll see if that works. Back Tennessee. Where in Tennessee? I'll be moving a little further east than where you're at. I'll be moving toward uh, Knoxville. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, Knoxville's the home, man. That's that's where I grew up. That's where I, I want to be. Uh, I already have the idea, man, the custom home. I already have the people I wanted to build it. Um, I've spoken with them. I just got to now get through these next couple of years, and and hopefully the, the freaking investments I've made in that time frame will get me to that spot. But we'll see, man. It's It's ever-changing. I see the guitar in the background, and you posted on Instagram, which is a very yes. 
that was a music thing. Was that a joke? Was that a real? No, no. I, I, I you can't hear it because my microphone won't pick it up if I try to play. But I, I started playing it yesterday, and it was my fingers are dead. It's freaking cut me up the little because you have to, you know, when you would put your fingers on the cords or whatever. Uh, but I, I enjoy it. I, I had played it like four or five years ago when I was, I was dating a girl that was playing him and she wanted me to learn and I was trying to, um, but I never really, I learned like a couple of chords. So I, I kind of forgot it. So last night I started playing again, but I, I enjoy it, man. It's, it's nice and relaxing. Um, plus it looks good on the set. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool back there, but yeah, I bought it yesterday. Nice little guitar, super cheap. Just finding other stuff to do with my time, man. Keep productive, get off the internet when I'm not working type stuff, you know? Is you going to release a song then? Dude, I, I would 100% do a song. I would do like a cover album if I could figure out how to play and sing at once. That's the tough part. You like learn how to play and then you got to learn how to sing while you're playing. Who would you do a collab with? Imagine you and Mams Taylor did a music collab together. That's hilarious. Uh, I would love to do a collab with my boy, Kill Jasper. Uh, I would love to do... I like Christian Mundo. He does music as well. Yeah, I was going to say Christian would be fun. Christian, I think, can play a little bit too. Um, yeah, bro. I don't know. Who, whoever and, and whenever, I'm down. Yeah, it's, fun. it's an exciting. Awesome. Well, Wade, I do appreciate it. I'll, yeah, see you soon. I'll see you in about a month or so when we've got some more big news to talk about. But yeah, thanks very much for popping on, man. Appreciate it as usual. Thanks, bro.